could help you all from Rexall. From Palm Springs, California, it's the Bill Harris Alice Fay Show, presented by the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall family druggists. Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist with a welcome from the 10,000 independent druggists who have made the word Rexall part of our own store names. You can always tell us by the orange and blue Rexall sign on our windows. The sign means that we carry the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. Many of you are already familiar with some of these famous products. Like MI-31, for example, Rexall's popular mouthwash. MI-31 is the antiseptic formula that kills contacted germs almost instantly when used full strength, yet does not harm delicate membranes of the mouth and throat. Quality like Rexall's MI-31 is what we family druggists are talking about when we tell you you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Could help you all from Rexall. And now your Rexall family druggist brings you the Bill Harris Alice Bay Show. Written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Bay and Bill Harris. Today is the Harris family's last day in Palm Springs. They want to take advantage of it, so Phil has insisted that they get up at 5 a.m. As we look in, they're returning to the hotel after a two-hour horseback ride. Gee, Mommy, we've had a wonderful morning. So far, we've played tennis and gone swimming and bicycle riding. What's the next thing planned for us? Well, I don't know. Let's go back to the room, wake Daddy up, and ask him. <laughs> Phyllis, why doesn't Daddy ever get up in the morning? Oh, he can't on account of his health. He said he has peculiar pigmentation of the skin, and the gamma rays of the morning sun affect his epidermis. <laughs> what does that mean? It's French for beat it, get lost, and let me sleep. <laughs> Mommy, why doesn't Daddy ever get up in the morning? Oh, for a very good reason, children. He says he's like a delicate flower. And the morning sun wilts him. Why, I thought the sun was good for flowers. Oh, not your father. He claims he's a jasmine and only blooms at night. <laughs> I wonder if he's awake yet. Isn't that Daddy sitting over there by the pool with Uncle Willie? So it is. Look, girls, you go in and get dressed, and I'll be there in a few minutes. I want to talk to Daddy. Hmm. I wonder what they're watching so intently. Uh-oh. It's that girl on the diving board in the French bathing suit. I'll sneak up behind them and see just how interested they are. Philip, isn't she a honey? Get that red hair, that beautiful face, and that voluptuous figure. <laughs> yes, William. But what about her character? <laughs> Can she carry on an intelligent conversation? Can she cook and sew and keep house? Who cares with a figure like that? <laughs> Wait a minute. Are we reading each other's lines? <laughs> You're right about that, girl, Philip. We men shouldn't be taken in by what appears on the surface. She looks nice from here, but... What about her background? Well, wait till she turns around, we'll find out. <laughs> you know, Willie, those two-piece bathing suits are really fascinating. So alluring. Phil! And that's why they disgust me. <laughs> I'll bet you just can't stand the sight of it. Honey, you're so right. I've been sitting here mortified. How long have you been sitting here? Oh, I've been mortified about three hours. <laughs> I think that girl looks disgraceful posing there with her bare midriff. Every man in the place is looking. Yeah. What a spot for a Burma shave ad. <laughs> well, come on, fellas. Let's go in for breakfast. Oh, oh, by the way, where's Frankie? Yeah, last time I saw him, a man was selling him a uranium mine for $50. Now, that sounds like something stupid enough for Frankie to fall for. Wait a for. minute. Wait a minute. Remley ain't stupid. 
He's got more sense than to fall for anything. Hiya, Curly. Ah. Oh. Hiya, Franklin. I'm glad you showed up. I hear you bought a uranium mine for fifty dollars. Oh, Curly, you don't think I fell for that, do you? I'm not gullible. I have too much sense. Besides, I was busy doing something much more important. What are you doing? Watching the flying saucers. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> Lean over here and breathe out, Clyde. <laughs> you were watching what? Flying saucers. Don't tell me you're one of the few remaining people who hasn't seen one. Remley, how many fingers have I got up? Look closely. Now, you were seeing things again. I am not. I can prove it. I saw a whole squadron of them. In fact, I turned to the guy I was spending the afternoon with and said, Did you see what I saw? And what did the bartender reply? Well... <laughs> I wasn't with no bartender. Oh, Frankie, a lot of people think they've seen flying saucers, but I don't believe it. I wouldn't believe it either if I hadn't seen those two guys from Mars who were driving it. <laughs> Oh, I gotta take the strings off his guitar. His music's driving him nuts. <laughs> Remley, let me get this straight. You saw a flying saucer with two men in it, and right away you knew that they were men from Mars. Oh, no, no, not right away. Came out in the course of the conversation. <laughs> you talk to the men from Mars? Well, naturally, I'm no snob. <laughs> I'll talk to anybody who's nice. All right. Do <laughs> you expect anybody to believe that wild story? Newspapers believed it. I called them last night and gave them the whole story. It's in every newspaper throughout the country oh, today. Oh, no, no, Remley. How can you pull a hoax like that? When that article appears with your name in it, you'll be the laughing stock of the nation. Everybody's going to laugh at you. Nobody's going to laugh at me. What makes you so sure? When I called the papers, I gave them your name. <laughs> Frankie, why did you have to give him my name? You can use the publicity. Look at these headlines. Alice Faye's husband sees flying saucers and talks to men from Mars. Alice Faye's husband? Yeah, I got you a little publicity, too. <laughs> well, you should have seen that sight. I was driving along the desert, and I saw those flying saucers come shooting from out of nowhere. Driven by men from Mars? No. No? That part I made up to make the other parts sound believable. <laughs> No, Curly, this is a sight I'll never forget. Those large cylindrical objects flashing through the sky at a terrific speed. And suddenly one plummeted to earth and landed in a burst on the desert. The door opened, and those little men started swarming over the... Hold country. it, Arson! <laughs> you saw this saucer land in the desert. Yeah, and I can prove it. I would have gone out to examine it yesterday, but it was getting dark. I'm going out now. If you'll come with me, I'll show you where it is. I ain't going. You better. I told the newspaper men to be here at 2 o'clock to get all the facts. You should be able to describe your flying saucer. Oh, Remley. The things you get me into, I don't... Oh, all right, I'll go. But you better produce a flying saucer. Yeah, I will. Alice, you want to come with us? No, no. I don't want him to think I'm a kibitzer. Who? The two men from Mars. <laughs> I'll only be in the way when you four start playing canasta. All right. Now, don't be facetious, Alice, or I shall not permit you to sing Wilhelmina from that new picture. What new picture? The one you're in, Wabash Avenue. You try to stop her and I'll break your arm. <laughs> sing, lover. <laughs> She's the cutest little girl in Copenhagen Wilhelmina She has all the fellas crazy in the noggin In Copenhagen And the roses on her cheeks And the music when she speaks And how sweet her kisses taste Sugar gainers like her mama's Danish pastry Wilhelmina Maybe soon she will elope in Copenhagen Copenhagen. Wilhelmina, she'll share everything, including his toboggan. In Copenhagen, all the other girls they know. But Wilhelmina, she's 
says, nice. All the boys call Wilhelmina Willie, but he calls Wilhelmina mine. And the roses on her cheeks And the music when she speaks And how sweet her kisses taste Sugar canish like her mama's Danish pastry Wilhelmina, Wilhelmina Maybe soon she'll elope in Copenhagen Wilhelmina, Wilhelmina Share everything including his toboggan In Copenhagen All the other girls say nine. But Wilhelmina, she says ten. All the boys call Wilhelmina Willie. But he calls Wilhelmina, Wilhelmina Oh, why did I ever let you fellas talk me into looking for a flying saucer? It doesn't exist. We've been tramping over this desert for five hours now, and I'm hot and tired and thirsty. So am I. I give anything for a drink. How about you, Curly? Water. <laughs> Water. There's no time to wash. <laughs> I want water to drink. To drink? You're in worse shape than I am. I'm just thirsty. You're delirious. <laughs> oh, Remley, you and your flying saucers. Getting it in the paper that I saw. If I don't produce one, they're going to laugh me out of town. I tell you, I saw one crash out here in the desert. It's around here someplace... Curly, look over there. That pile of twisted metal is my flying saucer. Remley, you're right. You see, Alice, and you thought he was having halicinations. <laughs> Come on, Curly. Help me dig this wreck out of the sand. Yeah, I'll help you. Maybe we can find some clue of where it's from, huh? Say, fellas. Fellas, I found the disc here. There's a lot of mud on it, but there, there seems to be something written underneath the mud. Well, scrape it off, honey. Scrape it off. Maybe it'll tell what planet it's from. Hurry up, Alice. Is it from Jupiter or Saturn? No. No, it starts with an M. M? It's either Mars or Mercury. Quick, Alice, what does it say? Maxwell. <laughs> an old hubcap. Maxwell. An old hubcap. So this is where Jackson buried his car. <laughs> Well, the insurance company finds out about this, they ain't going to like it. Why? Jackson told them Rommel captured it in Africa. <laughs> Frankie, this ain't a flying saucer. It's just an old automobile wreck. Who has to know that? Let's take it into town. They'll never know the difference. After all, it fooled you and me. Yeah. But how many people are you going to find as stupid as us? <laughs> True. <laughs> But look, Curly, you're in a spot with the newspaper men. You've got to take it back to town and try to palm it off as a flying All saucer. right, all right. We'll try to palm it off. We'll take it back. Oh, Frankie, why do you do these things to me? If you're trying to shorten my life. Why do you do it the hard way? <laughs> why don't you just stab me in the back, poison my beer? Tell Petrillo I'm working under scale. <laughs> Fellas get the craziest things. What goes on in your heads? Never mind. We got what it takes up here. Yes. Between the two of you, you have a lovely bunch of coconuts. I ain't gonna sing that song. I ain't either. Well, as long as nobody's gonna sing it, let's pick up these parts and get back to town. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we got the pieces all spread out on the ground. This stuff looks like it came from Mars, all right. Yeah. 
Does that, huh? <laughs> oh, man, if we can put this one over, we'll be the first ones to produce a flying saucer. Yeah. Providing Alice doesn't give us away. By the way, where is she? Yeah, she said something about going to find a psychiatrist. <laughs> What's wrong with her? <laughs> Well, um, she's been having headaches lately. I noticed she's been acting kind of strange. Yeah. Well, be that as it may. <laughs> Come on, let's look over this once more before the newspaper men get here. That's not necessary. This is perfect. Now, wait a minute, Rumley. I don't know. This looks too much like an automobile wreck. They're not going to be fooled by this. <laughs> of course, maybe not just by this. But they'll have to believe you when you produce the clincher. What clincher? The man from Mars. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot about him. Well, here we go again. <laughs> Look, Frankie, huh? we don't have a man from Mars. Yes, I know that. But all we have to do is find one and leave that to me. Oh, you know a guy, huh? Of course not. I don't know anybody from Mars. <laughs> How about that girl you were out with last night? <laughs> she ain't from here. <laughs> Don't be a wise guy. Now, I can find somebody. All we need is some short, weird-looking character with an oversized head. Hiya, fellas. Here I am. <laughs> Frankie, someday this kid ain't going to come in on cue, and then where will we be? <laughs> He never fails. He likes the part, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he's small enough and certainly weird-looking enough. <laughs> but um, his head ain't big enough. No, it isn't. Well, I'll take care of that. Hold still, Julius. Open your mouth. Get that bicycle pump out of my kisser! <laughs> Well, what are you afraid of, Julius? All we want to do is to pump your head up a little. Any special signs? <laughs> or shall we let it go till it boils? <laughs> well, wait a minute. Remley, hmm? how big do we have to make his head? I think 30 pounds ought to do it. <laughs> so we better make it 24. He's got a low-pressure skull. <laughs> Why don't you just make it 40 pounds? I think I got a slow leak in my head. <laughs> what makes you think so? I gotta have to keep coming around here all the time. <laughs> Fellas, I don't want you to think I'm a point killer, but I ain't gonna let nobody blow my head up. <laughs> Julius, now look, I know it may sound ridiculous, but we have a perfectly logical reason for wanting to do it. What's your reason? We need a man from Mars. <laughs> What's the matter? I almost choked on that one. <laughs> How fatty can two grown men get? <laughs> Julius, this may appear a little far-fetched, but Mr. Harris is in a spot, and we've got to help him. There was an article in this morning's paper saying that he saw a flying saucer and a man from Mars. That's right. Now, do you see why I need your help? Yeah. You tied one on, and you want me to loosen the knot. <laughs> Look, kid, if you'll do this thing for us, we'll give you 20 bucks. Oh, it's a deal. Hey, now, Remley, you better wait a minute, because we ain't never going to get away with this. Nobody's going to believe that he's from another world. They might when I get finished with them. I'll take them up to the room, put some weird clothes on them, a lot of grotesque makeup. I'll make them look like a lovely bunch of coconuts. I still ain't going to sing that song. <laughs> you want another lead-in? No, thanks. I'll creep into this one myself. <laughs> Bill Jackson was a poor old dub who joined the Dark Town Poker Club and cursed the day he told him he was John. That money used to go like it had wings. If he owed Queen someone at King's, each night he would contribute all that coin. He 
Said I'm gonna play him tight tonight. There'll be no bob tail flushes make me bite. He said when I get the nest of my hands, don't be a piece. Played him tight and lost his pile, and Bill got peevish after a while, so he rose, looked all around, and ate this big. Said you all see this brand new razor? I had it sharpened just today. Now I'm coming in with my rules that I want you to follow when you play, boy. Keep your hands up on the table while you're dealing, please. Don't be slipping the maces down there in between your knees. Don't be making them funny signs like you're trying to tip off your hand just talking American, boy, so uh, I can understand. And don't be getting them off the bottom because, ooh, that's rough. Take five, five, then stop. That's enough. Now, when you bet put up the chips, I don't like it when you shy. Then when you get busted, go get some. I'm going to be here by and by. Pass them cards, let me shuffle every time before you deal. Anything goes wrong, I want to see. I mean, you ain't going to play this game now, uh, according to that Mr. Hoyley. You're going to play this game according to me. Now, sitting right there in that there clan, they chanced to be a one-eyed man. The Bill kept on watching him out of the corner of his eye. The old one-eyed with deal and then would cross that Bill another five or ten. Bill got up again and looked all around him with a sigh. He said, Lord, it's an awful shame. He said, someone's cheating this year game. He said, Coach, uh, it ain't no dupe me to name the guy. So I refrain from mentioning the party's name. If I catch him cheating just once again, I'm going to take this fist and close that other eye. Now, do you see this brand new razor? I had it shot just today. I'm walking in with my rules that you must follow when you play egghead. Keep your bony hands up there while you're giving them out, please. Don't be slipping them wildies down in there between your knees. And don't be making them funny signs. You're still trying to tip off your hand. You better talk an American boy. Be hey, 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 so as I can understand. And stop getting them off the bottom. I keep trying to tell you it's rough. This is the Army game. Five, five, halt. That's enough. Now, when you bet put up the reds and blues, I don't like it when you shy. Then if you run out of gas, go get pumped up. I'll be here by and by. Pass them taste boards. Let me ripple every time before you deal. Let me irrigate around with them. I want to see. But you ain't going to play the game now, according to that Mr. Harley. You're going to play this game according to me. Now, Henry, if you'll break the seal on that new deck of bicycles, we'll go on from there. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Curly, I got Julius all dressed and made up. Here he is. Oh, no. How do I look? Like a street in Tijuana after a heavy rain. (laughs) Remley, what's that horrible-looking outfit he's wearing? Even a man from Mars wouldn't wear or couldn't wear a messy thing like that. Where'd you get that? It's one of your sport jackets cut down. Now, look, Julius, remember you're from Mars, so you can't talk a word of English. When the newspaper men get here, just talk gibberish. Do you want the southern or the provincial gibberish? <laughs> look, Frankie, we better give it up. This kid ain't going to fool anybody, and besides... Oh, there you I... are, Mr. Harris. Uh-oh, that's one of the newspaper men. Now, I'll have to go through with this. Don't forget, kid, gibberish. Well, Mr. Harris, you made the headlines all over the country with your story about the flying saucer and the man from Mars. Yes, I know. Now, personally, I don't believe it. We all know there's no such thing as... Well, I'll be darned. You have a man from Mars. He's the most frightening-looking creature I've ever seen. That's Frankie (laughs) Ramley. The man from Mars is the short, frightening creature over there. Thanks loads. (laughs) So this is what they look like. I I see it, but I don't believe it. Do you mind if I interview him? Uh, Well, Mr., uh, um, uh, well, you see, uh, he he doesn't talk English. uh, But I've been with him constantly since I found him. And I picked up a little of his native tongue. And I'll gladly interview him for you, uh... What do you want to know? Uh, ask him where he's from. Okay. <clears throat> Mugwump. <laughs> Oogle Moggle Liggle Hooger. <laughs> Willy Waddle with a Woody Wally. <laughs> huh? <laughs> We don't 
don't always understand each other. <laughs> Mugwump, the man wants to know where your home is. Holler Maga Ula Lama, where's the place to use a frama? <laughs> I'm a from Albuquerque. <laughs> what did he say? Oh, uh, you see, I taught him a few simple words in English, and uh, he's trying to be funny. <laughs> There's one thing I can't stand. It's a wise guy from Mars. All right. <laughs> now, mister, is there uh, anything else you'd like me to ask him? I have just one more question. How did he get here from Mars? What route did he take? Oh, the road. That's a good point. I'll ask him. <laughs> Mugwump. Sigamaga Alahuda Floozy. Routine. Aha! Hamadula Marsh. Kansas City. <laughs> You see, he was on a Goodwill tour. <laughs> Love Womp Chamber of Commerce. All right, fellas, you can break it up now. When I expose this whole thing as a hoax, the townspeople aren't going to like it. The whole thing ain't a hoax. I did see a lot of flying saucers yesterday. Two miles due north of town. Two miles due north. Yeah. I got news for you, blow top. <laughs> they have a skeet shoot out there. Those were clay discs you saw. Play this. Curly, how could you make such a stupid mistake? Tell him the new space that you saw flying. Family, I'll swear I'll kill you. A million times I'll kill you. and Phil will be back in just a moment. Meanwhile, here's your Rexall family druggist. Next Sunday is Easter, and maybe a lot of you mothers have the same problem one of my customers mentioned last week. You know, I love fixing a big dinner for Easter, but I wish that just once my family could come through a holiday without an epidemic of upset stomachs from acid indigestion. Why not do what thousands of other mothers do? Be sure you have a bottle of Bismarck on hand. Bismarck? That's Rexall's famous antacid, and it's just about the most prompt and soothing relief from acid indigestion I know of. What makes it so exceptional? The formula, ma'am. A Rexall exclusive. You see, Bismarex is specially compounded to work in a continuous relay. First, it quickly neutralizes excess acid, often within one minute. Next, it eases gastric distress. And finally, Bismarex leaves a soothing, protective covering on irritated stomach membranes. That's good to know. Certainly everyone knows you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexol. Good health to you all from Rexol. We're a little late due to this wonderful audience in Palm Springs, so good night, everybody. Don't let a spring cold make you cough your head off. Try Cherisote, Rexol's popular cough remedy. Ruby red, pleasant-tasting Cherisote goes after coughs two ways. First, it soothes the raw and irritated membranes of your throat and bronchial tubes. Second, it helps loosen your cough. Always see your doctor about a cough that hangs on. Ask for Cherisote at the store with the orange and blue Rexall sign on the window. And remember, you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Next, Sam Spade, then Gornell Wilde in Theater Guild on NBC. NBC. 